So what comes to mind when you hear the word cyber? Possibly you'd be thinking cybersecurity, perhaps? An intricate web of threats lurking in the digital domain. Did you know that every 39 seconds, a cyber attack occurs? And because of that, that would influence why the connotation is quite negative in terms of cyber. So your perception is so negative that even in my country, the Philippines is guilty of this. Why? Because we came out with the cyber crime laws prior to even having any legislation on cyber operations in general. So with this, we're looking at more of the criminality and not the functionality of it. So cyber is where technology meets humanity. Consider another term. If I ask you, what is a hack? There should be three things that comes to mind. One, you hack with an ax. Two, which is probably the most common, you're thinking of a hacker with a black hoodie hunched in a dimly lit basement. Or three, maybe any of you watched Five Minute Hacks? Do you know about the five minute tax? Yeah. yeah. So now there's a different perspective to this, no? If you notice that in that sense, hack is about repurposing everyday objects in creative ways to make our lives easier. So it's positivizing it of sorts, right? So it's resourceful, it's imaginative, and it challenges us to think things differently, doesn't it? So now let's add another layer to this uh, definitions that we're asking. Now I ask you to think about security. Define security. I am from the military sector. And uh, oftentimes, what comes to mind for a military personnel is personal protection. Guns, goons, locks and keys, right? So let me give you a brief background about myself. I used to work for the Presidential Security Group, your version of the Secret Service, and our mission is to protect our VVIPs from harm and embarrassment. That one word, embarrassment, shifts the narrative. Security now in context now becomes more physical protection it's not just that, but more on emotional and psychological assurance as well. So an example that most of you will resonate with is your families. If you want to secure your families, you take out loans in order for you to build a home and have a roof on top of your heads of the families. You, know? you want them to eat three times a day. That's food security for you. Or if you have children... You take in educational loans so that you're assured that your children will be able to take the courses they like and propel, propel themselves in life. So with all of this, we're not just looking at the future. We're talking about not just fences and potlucks, but instead you endeavor, endeavor to procure educational plans for your site's child's stability, opportunity, and be able to finish your studies and gain a degree. So overall, security then is not just about safeguarding what truly matters, but what is intangible or intangible. So today, I invite all of you to shift your perspective about cyber. Let's move beyond the usual dystopian images of cybercrime and threats. And what if you imagine that cyber is not just a battleground, but it's an avenue for peace. We want to attain security in the cyber domain, security as what was defined in the overall context. Cyber then can be considered as a double-edged sword. It is capable of harm, yes, 
but also immense good. And that's what I want to focus on cyber as an instrument for peace. So all of this began when I took my Command and General Staff course, and uh, I wanted to do research on the nexus between my background as a soldier and, uh, you know, in the Philippines, soldiers are inherently development practitioners because we represent the government in the far-flung areas. And so I am also a signal officer. I deal with C4S, Command, Control, Communications, and Cyber. So I wanted to find the nexus between both. And so in my research, I came across a concept called cyber peace. And with that, this became an idea. We made it into reality. After graduating, I became a battalion commander, and my team and I brought to life and lived into practice this advocacy dubbed as the Cyber for Peace Initiative. So it goes above and beyond our usual signal du duties. So as the commander holding the helm of command on signal practitioners, I wanted to veer away from being just, you know, on the screens of computers, troubleshooting for our troops, and acting as radio operators, and installing signal capabilities merely inside camp. But ultimately, I wanted to feel, and my soldiers to feel, that we wanted to go out and touch the lives of other Filipinos. So our goal was simple. It was transformative. And we wanted to leverage technology for development, to bridge gaps, and to build connections. So we not just address security threats, but societal challenges as well. In the Philippines, we have a saying that insurgency begins where the road ends. Thus, in isolated areas with little infrastructure, we harness technology to build bridges. We wanted to bridge these divides and foster collaboration. So how did we do it? First, we did it by forging partnerships and embracing collaboration. So we partnered with local governments, mayors from uh, one city that was gearing towards being a smart city, and another mayor from the locality where my battalion was. So we conducted cyber hygiene trainings, empowering communities with practical online safety skills. So we wanted them to know how to avoid being scams and being uh, attacked by hackers, teaching cybersecurity as being everyone's responsibility. So the thing is, there are no borders to cyber, right? We cannot say, hey, you're, in, you're entering Philippine cyber domain. There's no such thing. So we wanted to teach each and every Filipino on how to protect themselves with their gadgets, with their devices, not to be attacked by hackers and scammers, and Collectively, if each Filipino knows how to protect himself, then collectively we form that barrier of security for the Filipino people. And so I have been a first-hand witness of how a whole-of-nation approach was effective um, during this pandemic response. I was part of those who were in the front lines during the pandemic response, and we were able to prove that we can integrate and interoperate our systems together as one whole of nation, and we are able to band together as one Filipino nation towards the same goal. So this was evidenced by vaccination campaigns, systems that we have been implementing, contact tracing, community pantries, and other activities that we have did. So I know that working together to build up our defense in the cyber domain is not an impassable task. So another Cyber for Peace initiative we did was to partner with universities. Since uh, students are targets of insurgency, we wanted to give them a better option. We opened our doors to the students as on-the-job trainees. So they came into my battalion, we immersed them in real-world challenges and taught them how to use cyber and have cyber skills to be cyber warriors. 
So we t- taught them hardware maintenance, troubleshooting, coding, and all those things. And in that effect, we were also able to protect the youth from being led astray to malign ideologies. Another thing we did was partnered with researchers. And because we are, the so- we are operating in the area, we are able to see and to give ground data from remote areas where civilian access was difficult. Some areas, insurgency prone, are vulnerable to ambush, harassments, and other attacks. So we gathered this raw data from the ground and we gave it to these researchers. So one example was during the COVID-19, there was a lot of research coming out that online learning was effective, right? And us going out to these far-flung areas, we have seen that this is really not so. There are no connectivities in far-flung areas. There's even no access to gadgets. And if their gadgets get um, needs for repair, there was no repair centers in those areas. And so we challenged the rosy narratives about the effectiveness of online learning, given the status of connectivity in the area and this access, as I said. So with this, for everything else in between, we also leverage collaborations with other agencies. So we use cyber trainings to address national concerns like critical infrastructure, such as this uh, infrastructures that when impacted poses national security concerns. We also look at this in terms of our power grids, water systems, and telecommunications. And Also, we looked at the implications of smart cities and the Internet of Things in general because we have other cities moving towards this. And we looked at the overarching premise that what offers convenience also poses security concerns. So we considered all of these buzzwords such as AI and its ethical implications. For instance, AI in the military is actually a game changer but it's also walking towards a tightrope, right? Because after all, in the military setting, when we deal with human lives, any decision that we carry carries the weight of life and death. So with all these activities that we have been conducting, we promoted the cyber for peace in our area of operations. And you know what? The results were remarkable. The Cyber for Peace initiative proved that technology can foster unity, innovation, and closer cooperation. And I am very happy to note that Cyber for Peace became a part of the strategic plan of a major unit of the Philippine Army. And the Armed Forces of the Philippines in general adopted the concept as one of the ways the Philippines will address insurgency. This reinforces the idea that peace can thrive in the digital domain. But Cyber for Peace isn't just about the results. It is a vision, a vision of a digital utopia where technology isn't merely a tool, but a catalyst for global harmony. It is a vision that boldly declares that yes, cyber can heal. Yes, cyber can empower, and yes, cyber can unite. So this is, just, this is not just a concept. It is a movement, a movement to harness technology for good. And so I leave you with this. I leave you with this challenge. Let us all wield cyber, not as a source of division, but as a bridge to unity. In our interconnected world, every click, every line of code, and every connection has the power to create real-world impact. Together, let us all build a world where cyber isn't just about security. It is about opportunities and collaboration. So I enjoin you. Take action with us. Advocate, innovate, and collaborate to achieve a just 
and lasting cyber peace. Thank you.